3CX just released version 20 and I wanted to cover it. There's a lot of new features here. It's amazing. I've set this system up at multiple businesses over the past five years and still use it at many client sites. So let's explore version 20. This video is sponsored by 3CX, but there's a lot of changes here. So first we're gonna go through all the new features and then also before you move, a couple things you need to look at before making that leap. So let's get into it. All right, so we did a fresh install of V20 now. I'm just gonna hit restore from backup and we're gonna just go and upload our backup file. So this should be under our downloads, uh, V18. We're gonna upload that. It's roughly 300 megs, so it is a sizable amount of data as it's years of this thing. So let's see how this uh, restore works. Now for me, I like to use 5001 and 5000 uh, instead of the defaults, just because I do use other stuff on here, but obviously for SIP and tunneling, I don't mess with those ports. I did notice during the restart, uh, or basically the restore here, it did say uh, resolving your, you're waiting for your, your fully qualified domain or FQDN to be resolved. It did hang there for like a minute or two. So make sure you give this enough time to do everything it needs to do. Don't jump the gun and reboot your system or anything like that. I always just like, make sure you, you take a breath, go grab a drink and then come back during these kind of restore processes as there can be parts that can hang for a minute or two. And all you have to do is just kind of be patient. All right, it says it's all set up. Got my license key. The whole fully qualified domain is there. Everything looks great. Public IP. That restoration took about seven minutes on my hardware, which it's just using a Synology box and a virtual machine on it using uh, only two cores. Very, very minimal setup. So obviously if you had like a full blown system, this could have gone faster. Uh, I don't think there's pretty much any slower than this. Anything over 10 minutes on a restoration uh, that's around two or 300 megs, probably something else went up. But if uh, you have a large amount of data, gigs in size, just know this, this probably would take longer. So now that we're in version 20, you'll notice the dashboard is so much better. Actually, this is the web client. So this is the web client and the admin portal if you have admin capabilities. Having this right here is so much nicer than having the two websites. So I love this addition and they've cleaned up the portal and the dashboard to where everything's just right here, which is great. I love this new layout and I've been using this extensively just to kind of figure out where everything is at. So let's run through some of the new features of the dashboard because I really enjoy the new layout. First, users, not a whole lot changed here. The big thing here is addition of two factor. You click this. It enables two-factor for all things. You hit OK, and then two-factor gets turned on. So the next time they log in, they'll have to set up two-factor. Right now, I don't have mine turned on just for this purpose. Uh, under that, we have voice and chat. This is the new SIP trunks. So SIP trunks has moved into voice and chat. You have all these new different ways of, of doing things. I love this setup. We can set the routes and everything right here. So uh, the old way is a little bit different um, with this actually being pushed down. It was actually below outbound rules before. Now in phones, we have these different phones registered on this network. You can see I have three different phones. We have a soft phone. We have a SIP T58, which is the Yaling phone. That's my main phone. And then I have a Fanville X7 Enterprise. Uh, and actually, I have another Fanville right here. This one's um, the X3U, so uh, I've used this one as well. So uh, great phones. I love the Fanville phones, but I think the Yaling just just look a little more sexy. Now, one cool new option uh, over on the user panel, but also departments and ring groups and all the different things for telephony, you can assign DIDs directly. So let's say I wanted to pull in the main DID. I can assign that number right here. That's pretty slick. I love having that ability. And also I like kind of having office hours in departments now. This departments is completely new as well. So you add departments based on what it is. So let's say your billing department goes home early, but the call center or whoever you got over here is a different department. You can set up multiple departments and assign roles to each one. So I, I have that, but 
over in my other default one, we have Glinda, the digital receptionist, and then an all ring group. The office hours are obviously set right here. Call handling, this is where you have your ring groups, digital receptionists, all that, and you can assign the different departments right here. So let's say I wanted to change this and assign it the specific DID, I would do that right here and then save that out. Right now, I think my DID, I would assign to the all hours department but I don't necessarily have to do any of that. <laughs> Let's say I just wanted to assign it to the default ring group. I could assign it here as well, or assign it to the digital receptionist, or have a, a call flow and go through one to the next and just do like a waterfall. There's oh, just the sky's the limit here. So cool that you can assign all these different things. Another big improvement here is call reports. The call reports are great. Uh, the, the logs used to kind of for lack of better words, weren't great. And now the reporting is much more robust, going through call logs, chat logs, audit logs for the actual system itself, uh, statistics, all that is just right here in the report section. Such a, a great change. There's also an update specifically when it comes to voicemail. Uh, if you're trying to get voicemails transcribed, they do have the new Google transcribe service. I noticed in V18 recently that actually broke because Google updated their API. The new V20 updated the Google API and now you can have Google transcription again, which is really nice for, for voicemail specifically. The other big security changes other than two factor being added was also split DNS. You'll notice up here at the top, my address is a fully qualified domain. And the nice thing is, what a split DNS does is if I'm local, which I am to my PBX box here, it won't go all the way out to the internet and come back. It used to be you could just log into your local IP and then that's one way around it and then you log into the fully qualified if you're away. Well, now you just put the fully qualified in everywhere and then if you're local, it'll just use the split DNS and go to there. The downside to doing split DNS is a lot of people like Home Labber specifically Let's say you didn't update your gateway and you're using just some residential one. It's not going to be able to do hairpin NAT, which is what's needed for split DNS. So very important, have a good gateway. And I mean, most businesses, I don't think very many small businesses uh, run on that. But if you are a small business and you have like an AT&T gateway, something to note about V20 is that it does have higher security but with higher security it comes a little bit more inconvenience with uh, specifically if your router doesn't have hairpin NAT, you're going to have to replace your router. They also have call processing scripts, which I don't personally use, but if you're a programmer out there and need a lot of telephony work, by all means, check that out and new API access specifically for system configuration and client configuration. So think of something like, hey, you wanted to show on your website, I'm on the phone, you could actually program into the API to, to call and say, hey, grab that username, grab their current status, which if we look over here, you can see my status, I can put it up, hey, am I available, am I away, do not disturb, all those things can be pulled from an API. So the big things before you move and make this jump, as I've kind of showcased at the very beginning of this video, one, I would check phone capabilities. So if you're using a little bit older phones that aren't capable of router phones, check the list, make sure it's in the supported or preferred section. I would recommend if you're in limited it's like older phones, you might have to do some manual configuration, which never fun. So always check your supported phones before making any big version updates. The other thing is allocate downtime. I say at least allocate an hour or two. Uh, don't think, Hey, it's just going to go because this is a pretty complicated complicated move because on my box, when I went to go from 10 to 11 at the very beginning of this stream, it got stuck in the middle. And while I probably could have SSH'd in, troubleshoot the problem, at that point I was like, I have backups. Let's just take it down, spin up a new box. There's something, I like spinning up a new VM anyways, and just going directly to the V20 ISO directly from 3CX. I kind of like that without having any remnants of the old versions of Debian on there. So I liked just going that method. I think the best way to do this, if I was going to like do it for a business is let's say you're having on like a Raspberry Pi or something. Now, I honestly would move that to like a, a full virtual machine on a server somewhere if you have that capability and then spin that up, get everything set, 
get it all installed, and then go through the walkthrough like I did at the very beginning of the video. I think that would be the best way. And then if things don't go right, you could just flip back to your old hardware configuration. It wouldn't be that big a deal. So those are the two things. Allocate the downtime. I like to install things in parallel. So having the old system there and then just having a new system, doing an in-place upgrade, I don't really recommend. You can do it but just know you might run into some problems and I, I wanted to kind of show that. The other thing is check the official checklist. They have an official checklist at 3CX on this. Assign a system owner, check your requirements. The big requirement here is two gigs of RAM and two CPUs. Uh, I had in version 18 only one gig of RAM and one CPU assigned. So my initial log file, when I pulled it up, it failed immediately. Right here at the end, you can actually see the log file it said, hey, insufficient CPU core. So I actually got this emailed to me, which was nice. It was very easy to troubleshoot if you do have any failures, but something to note. Uh, move queues, IVR, ring groups to departments. That's one big thing is doing the department setup. I mentioned the departments, kind of showed where they're at. Make sure you configure those after you move to, to V20. That's Lead and leave enough time so you can troubleshoot that and set up the office hours as well. By default, the office hours aren't even filled in. Also, make sure you check your rights and your roles. As uh, there used to be an admin user, there's no admin user anymore. It just uses your user and it's, are your user, does it have admin privileges? Which I really like because actually having just an admin user, always a terrible one for security practices. I like having just each independent user have, hey, if that person's an admin and they have that capability, just have them have that role. And that way, if there's multiple admins, you know who screwed it up, <laughs> which is fun for troubleshooting. And then uh, set call visibility. Check out the new smartphone. Um, I have it over here. This is where it's at. You get it from the store. If you go through the 3CX website, they still want to give you the old smartphone. Uh, right now, they only distribute this directly from the Microsoft Store. This is the new one, which is really nice. I like having the present states right here. You can use it if you go with uh, soft phones. I'm not a big soft phone guy personally. I still like, hey, picking up the phone, grabbing a receiver. I call me old school, but I just nothing can go wrong with that. But the nice thing about this soft phone, if you do want to go down this route, is you can do like click to call and other things, which is nice. The other nice thing about the soft phone is you can get your voicemails directly here, which is really cool. So I really like having access to your voicemails directly on your computer. Uh, that was a nice thing, recent calls, and I, it does have Tappy support as well. If you look in settings, you can kind of see setting the audio microphone speaker if you want to actually use it directly on the thing, or you can actually have it tie into your, your headset as well. As far as hot desking and schedule reports, it says don't use these features yet, but I did notice hot desking was here. So uh, I'll have to get clarification on that, but it does look like that. It should be here in the end of the month or it, it's out live right now. So uh, be aware if you are using hot desking, may wait another month or so until you get official reports from 3CX on that. But I'll leave links to this. My guide kind of goes through everything I've done in this video. Uh, hopefully that helps you out. I'll leave links to the actual setup, the old school setup of 3CX, uh, so you can easily follow along with that. I think I did it on a Raspberry Pi. I think version 20, though, uh, the system itself did not look like it had an install for a Pi. So you might be moving all to virtual machines now, which, frankly, that's kind of what I like to do anyways. Having and uh, relying on just a Pi at a, a client site is nothing I ever really wanted to do. So I have always moved them to a more virtual machine setup. But... Something to note when, when thinking about this. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next one.